So now we already move to the next topic of our course, it's a genetic marker. In the past few lectures, we already learned for the we already learned quite a lot for the DNA protocol, the protocol that used in the uh, DNA extraction. Okay, we PCR and sequencing. So now we're going to go back to a little bit more uh, theoretical background. So if we want to study the DNA before we before we, we want to do the PCR, we have to decide which part of the genome that we want to study. In many cases, we don't really need to study the entire genome. We are only interested in a particular gene that we want to study. After this lecture, you should be able to understand the origin of genetic variation. As I said just now, there are many different sections, the part of the genome that you can use to, or you can select for your DNA study. However, different type of the genetic marker might, be, might have some different characteristics and different organism might only provide you a certain marker which is suitable for you to study the genetic variation. So for this lecture, I will focus first give you the background about the genetic variation, the origin of the genetic variation. And then I will going to discuss more on the genetic marker that can be selected, that can be used for when you study the animal. In the next lecture, we're going to discuss more on the other organism for plant and also for other organism. So for today, first I give you a very short revision. So just a short, very short revision about the cell molecular biology. Okay. Then after that, we discuss a bit about the genetic relation, and then the genetic markers. Okay, for animals. For cell biology, so there are some terminology that you will. You will encounter, okay, you will see in these two weeks. A lot of this terminology actually you have seen in your previous course for cell biology and genetic. So for example, we are going to talk a little bit about the functional gene, coding DNA, non-coding DNA, nuclear marker, or Organelle marker. So both are the genetic marker. It's just that the genetic information is from different part of the shell, a uh, cell. Either it's from the nucleus or from the organelle. Prokaryote, eukaryote cell. So different cell type. The making of the cell is different. So the genetic where they store the genetic information also quite different. And also the some organelle in the eukaryote cell, for example, ribosome, mitochondria, and chloroplast. And we will talk a little bit about the DNA, RNA, RNA, and protein. Large subunit, small subunit, and the name of the different gene or different genetic marker. So you have to first at least you have to know what is each of these terminology means and and especially for the gene name the, the different type of the gene okay and what is the characteristic of different type of the gene okay and different type of the marker so we're not going to discuss a lot about the function of the gene in specific. We only uh, discuss briefly about the function. But somehow you have to, at the end of the these two weeks, you should have some basic idea for, if you see the paper mentioned the 16S, 
Okay, then you should know what does it mean. Okay, which marker is from? Is it from the nuclear marker or organic marker? Okay. Or if you read the paper about the molecular phylogeny of a bird, so even without going to the detail, you already have some basic knowledge that you already can guess which gene that they can they are they have been used in the article because birds is a eukaryotic cell, it's an animal, so it's more likely that you will, they will study the nuclear DNA and also the mitochondrial DNA, and they are not going to include the uh, chloroplast DNA in their study. And for nuclear DNA, you know that for the mammal, usually they will use the CO1, uh, so they will use the ITS for less conserved gene. Or maybe they want to solve the very high phylogeny, they will use a 20AS, which is a more conserved gene than the ITS. And for mitochondria, maybe it's more likely they use the CO1. Okay, so we're going to discuss more in detail in the next few slides. So you have learned all this already in your secondary school and even in your cell biology and genetics. Uh, in your first year. So you know that all cells store their hereditary, her hereditary information in DNA. Okay? And all cells replicate their DNA okay? by DNA replication, what we call the DNA replication. And all cells transcribe portion of their DNA and RNA. So this is the first so you just refer to this diagram. So you have the DNA, and in the cell itself, when they want to replicate, okay, the DNA, they will do the they will, they can replicate by using the DNA polymerase. Then after that, maybe they will replicate the entire genome. But when you when we try when when you start to want to produce some protein, they will only transcribe part of the genome okay, into RNA molecule. <coughs> then after that, the cell also translate the RNA into protein. Okay. And all the cells use protein as Catalyst. So protein is a very important molecule in our body, but everything is start from the DNA. So I didn't discuss in detail how the replication process happen, transcription and translation, because you should learn this in your basic biology already. So each protein okay, is produced by a fragment of DNA, so a section of the DNA. Here, and what we call it a gene. Okay. So basically, all cell function as a biochemical factory that dealing with the same basic molecular building block. So if you Check on this website, you can get the genome size. Okay, how uh, the the number of the gene for different organism. Okay, for example, the organism with the smallest genome size. Okay, it has only four hundred eighty genes. Okay, for human, it's between is around twenty twenty thousand to twenty five thousand gene gene. So for DNA molecule is the same. If in the let's say in the in the human, so you have different cell types. You have tissue cell, muscle cell, okay, and different cell type. And all these different cell type, actually they contain the same DNA, okay, same genome. So the next topic is about the eukaryote and prokaryote cell. This is again a revision. 
So there are a few things you have to remember, recall from your previous uh, course, okay, the things that you learned from your previous course. So you should know about the difference between eukaryote and prokaryote cell. So eukaryote cell including the plant cell and animal cell, prokaryote cell, for example, the bacteria cell. So even from the diagram, you really can see that the making of the cell is quite different. Okay. So first, so in, in this context, we need to discuss the, uh, the characteristics that are related to our, our course. So eukaryote cells keep their DNA in internal compartment. So for example, this is a new nucleus. This is a nucleus. Okay. And in the nucleus, this is where the DNA is stored. Okay. Yeah. And there also DNA in the chloroplast. Okay, they also DNA in the mitochondria. Okay. Same as animal, you have the DNA in the nucleus, you have the DNA in the mitochondria. In any of these eukaryote cell, the DNA material is kept in the internal compartment. Okay. Okay. So for example, in nucleus, where for prokaryote cell, the DNA is not kept in the internal compartment. Okay. There is no nucleus in the prokaryote cell. There is no nucleus in the prokaryote cell. Okay. So these are the DNA. So when we look in detail about the organelle, so for chloroplast, they have the mitochondria and uh, for, for plant cell, they have the mitochondria and chloroplast. So this is where they store their DNA. Okay. For animal, they also have the DNA for the mitochondria. So the DNA of the mitochondria is different from the nucleus DNA. Okay. These two are not related. Okay. So this is all about the basic about the cell biology.